What are the symptoms of spinal stenosis in your neck? If you've been recently diagnosed with spinal stenosis in your neck or cervical spinal stenosis is the medical word for it, maybe your doctor has told you that you have spinal stenosis in your neck, or you've had an MRI and you see the word spinal stenosis, it can be kind of a scary word, especially if you start Googling it and looking it up on the internet. So I'm Dr. Dave Candy, and in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you what it really means to have spinal stenosis in your neck, what the different types of spinal stenosis you can have in your neck are, and the symptoms of those types of spinal stenosis, plus how to know if it's serious and what you need to do about it. So first of all, you should know that there are three different types of spinal stenosis in your neck. There's central canal stenosis, which is a narrowing of a space around the spinal cord. It's basically the narrowing of the central canal that runs from your head down through your spine. And that central canal stenosis is probably the most serious of them, but most people even that have that don't need surgery for it. Now, the second type is lateral recess stenosis. And moving out from the central canal, the nerve roots that come off of the spinal cord they pass over a area of bone, and that area is called the lateral recess. Now, after they go over that lateral recess, they can also pass through the foramen or the holes in the side of the neck where the nerves come out. And if those spaces are narrowed, then that's called foraminal stenosis, the narrowing of the holes where the nerve roots come out. Now, stenosis doesn't necessarily mean anything serious. It really just is a fancy medical word for narrowing of a space. So whether that space is the central canal around your spinal cord or the space in the lateral recess or the space in the vertebral, intervertebral foramen on the side of your neck where the nerve roots come out, all it means is that space is narrowed. So the most obvious treatment for a narrowing of a space is to widen the space. Now, the most difficult problem is in that central canal, like I mentioned, because you have your vertebrae and they're basically like a ring. And if you look down through your head, you've got those rings that are stacked up on top of one another, one after the other, after the other, after the other. Now, you can't widen that hole. It's a ring of bone like that. And so you can't make the hole any wider. If it started to develop bone spurs or for whatever reason, if that space is narrowed, there's nothing short of surgery that you can do to widen that space. But surgery in that area is very, very dangerous because it's so close to your spinal cord that it can cause damage and possibly make the symptoms worse. So if at all possible, you want to avoid surgery. Now, you can't anatomically make that space wider, but what you can do is functionally widen that space. If you've got the rings of bone, and again, you're looking down this way, so you've got a ring of bone and then another ring of bone in front of it. And so if you've got the two rings of bone that are stacked up on top of one another, and you look down the center of them like this, you can see that that space is at, at its widest when the two vertebrae are in a line with one another. Now, if one vertebrae slides forward on the other, it narrows that space in between. And that sliding forward, that can happen when you sit with your head forward. For example, sitting looking forward like that. That is akin to taking that space and shearing one vertebrae on the other. So your spinal canal is widest when you have all of the vertebrae aligned where the holes are in a line with one another. Now, not everyone, in fact, most people don't sit like that. So a way that you can functionally widen the space in your spinal cord is just to sit with your ears over your shoulder, chin down, so that all the vertebrae are lined up with one another. And those holes are stacked as best as possible in a straight line. Now you don't need to go overboard with it. You don't need to go really far back that way and give yourself a military neck. But you do wanna sit so that you're not having your head forward and shearing the vertebrae and functionally narrowing those spaces between the two vertebrae. So that's the first problem, the central canal spinal stenosis. And what are the symptoms of central canal spinal stenosis? Well, if you have central canal spinal stenosis in your neck, that's going to compress along the spinal cord. 
And so that can cause numbness or tingling in your hands and or in your legs. It can also cause some balance problems in more severe cases or can cause some stumbling, like it, you look like you're walking around like you've had too much to drink, but that's only in very serious cases. The most common symptoms that you'll get if you have compression of the spinal cord are some tingling in your hands and feet. You may notice if you go to the doctor and they check your reflexes, your reflexes may be a little hyperreflexive. For example, if the doctor hits your knee with a hammer, you might notice that your knee jerks a little bit more than it might normally. And that's because when you have the compression on the spinal cord, that sort of heightens the reflex arc. It makes it a little bit bigger. As opposed to if you have a pinched nerve on the side of your neck, that causes more of a decreased reflex. So that brings us to what are the symptoms of lateral recess stenosis or foraminal stenosis? And those two are fairly similar because they don't pinch the spinal cord, they pinch the nerve root that comes off of the spinal cord. And so if you have a pinched nerve in the lateral recess or in the vertebral, intervertebral foramen on the side of the neck, that pinches the nerve root and it can cause numbness or tingling, usually only in your hand or in your arm in that case. It usually doesn't go down into your legs if it's just a nerve root that's pinched. And how far down your arm it goes depends on the level that that nerve root is pinched at. The C5 nerve tends to go to the shoulder, the C6 and C7 nerve go down into your arm, and then the C7, C8, and T1 nerves make it all the way down into your hand. And this C6 nerve goes down into your hand as well. It goes into your thumb and index finger. So depending on the level of the nerve root that's pinched, that may affect the symptoms that you have. But you may have numbness or tingling, or you may notice some weakness in your hand or your arm. So what do you do about it? Well, again, most of those problems don't need surgery. Only when it's gotten really, really, really serious would you need surgery for that type of a nerve problem. But if the problem hasn't quite gotten that serious, when you bend your head forward, bringing your head down that way, that kind of helps open up the spaces between the nerve roots. Additionally, if you tip your head to the side, it helps open up the spaces on this side. And if you tip your head to the other side, it opens up the spaces on that side. So if you only have spinal stenosis in the foramen on one side, you can try tipping your head to the opposite side and that will open this side up. Now, a, a negative effect of that is it also closes that side down. So if you've got degenerative disc disease and you've got some stenosis in the frame on both sides, then that may not be as good of an option for you. But the looking down or stretching with your head down that way, that opens the spaces on both sides. Now, again, you don't want to sit with your head forward or look down like that because then that shears the central canal. And so those are the stretches that you can do if you do have stenosis in the lateral recess or in the foramen in your neck. So hopefully you found this video helpful to learn how to open up the spaces if you do have spinal stenosis in your neck, to understand the symptoms that you may be having, and hopefully it decreases some fear, and know that chances are pretty good that you won't need surgery for it. Now, if you do need help for spinal stenosis in your neck and you happen to live in the St. Louis area, we'd be happy to help you out at More for Life. And if you're watching this from somewhere else, but you found the video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Thanks for watching and have a great day.